kind of put like a big target on my back. You know, everybody wanted to call me out, like I want to fight this guy. I was always focused on boxing. I didn't want to go hang out. I didn't want to, even like now, I don't want to go party. It's never been something that I wanted to do. I'm just trying to improve every day. Mm -hmm. That's just what it's mainly about. Nobody's perfect, but I'm trying to be the best. I'm trying to fix what mistakes I've done. I'm Lauren Gardner, and this is Born Fighter, sitting alongside Rashad Mati today. Okay, we have the Albanian bear. We had, yeah. what were you, the mad dog before that? Mad dog, right before And then that. as a kid, you were punch baby? Oh, uh, baby punch. Baby punch. Baby punch. Take me through the evolution of these nicknames. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, you know, I was always punching. That was one thing. <laughs> Even when, like, when I had my food together, I would always hit my food together. You know, it was just... I feel like boxing was always born with me, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's just how it was. And, that, and that's kind of how we started with the boxing. First we started off as self-defense, and then it moved on to, you know, competitive, you know, grappling and boxing and kickboxing. And then I was just always so aggressive when I was young. Mm -hmm. I was always, when it came to fighting, I was always so aggressive. So when it started off, they were like, mad dog, he's got a mad dog. <laughs> and that's how the mad dog started. But then all of a sudden when I was fighting, my evolution kind of changed. Now I try to see a little more of like chess. So then after a while, they were like, yo, this guy's, all of a sudden they started calling me Albanian Bear. And I was like, I'll take it. You know, I'll take cool. it. It kind of like clicked with me. Because mm -hmm. I always try to show off that I'm Albanian. That's how it is. But Bear, I'm always just trying to, you know, put on a show and, and always start attacking. And that's just kind of how it started. I mean, anyone can be named Mad Dog. There are a lot of Mad Dogs out oh, there. Oh, yeah. It's, I don't think there's a, any other Albanian bear. No, I don't think so. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to trademark it. Just in case. I love that. So you're really proud of your heritage. Your parents of are course. from Albania. My mom's actually born in Jersey. But oh, she's Albanian, but she's okay. born from Jersey. My dad, yeah, straight from over there in Albania. That's so cool. So what do you know about the culture? I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't been there. I mean, uh -huh. I've been there one time, tried to fight over there. But um, yeah, everything I learned is from my dad. Everything over there is completely different than you know what I'm used to and everybody over here but eventually you get to adapt and you learn the culture and the language and mm -hmm. everything like that always fighting always aggressive started off as self-defense just take us through that journey and how you kind of found boxing is more of a craft than just something to channel all this energy eventually after a while you start realizing it it becomes an art I, that's how I feel like it, it becomes like chess but mainly it's an art Mm -hmm. You know, if you see different fighters like MMA, I did MMA, Jiu Jitsu, wrestling, kickboxing, Muay Thai, I, I did all the fight styles. It's just, when you see boxing, boxing's a little bit different. It's more of like, you have to check your footwork and every other art form, it's like brute force. Whoever's more stronger usually ends up winning. Yeah. But boxing, it's like, you can have a guy that's way more stronger lose to a guy that's way more crafty and has better footwork and defense, like a Mayweather. That's what clicked with me more. Everybody was like, why don't you turn pro with MMA? Why don't you turn pro with this? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just feel like boxing's more different compared to all of them. Mm -hmm. That's why I prefer it. it. Speaks to you. Yeah, that's what I feel like. Okay, I think you were 11 years old and you had this video go viral. Oh my God. Yeah, what the, the Prodigy video. Yes. Uh, honestly, we didn't even expect it to go viral. It just, wow. people came up to me one day and they came to see us train. Uh, I think they were talking to Sosa, my coach first. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, we have this guy, you know, he does all this stuff together. And um, yeah, they, they came up to me and they did this video. Once they published it, two days later, we see like two million views already. And I'm like, okay. Wow. The next day, another extra couple million. And I'm like, okay. But then I started getting all these messages and everything. It just kind of put like a big target on my back. You know, everybody okay. wanted to call me out. Like, I want to fight this guy. And me, I didn't mind it. Amateurs, I get to learn more and I fight more. I fought in tons of fights. If you hear, see all these like fights that I have, mm -hmm. boxing, I had over 100, 125 fights. Kickboxing, I had over almost 70 fights. And that got me more active. I fought more and more. Yeah, and at that age, though, receiving all of that attention of course. and sometimes negative. What did you learn from that experience? To not um, avoid all the negative. To me, honestly, I don't. I don't really get angry. I don't get, you know, upset with the comments. So I get messages all the time saying like, "Oh, this guy can't fight," and I'm like, "Okay, it's fine." I mean, <laughs> everybody has their opinion. I don't really mind it. It's just, I like to prove people wrong. That's that's the one thing I love doing, and then mm -hmm. I love proving people wrong. So you don't feed the trolls. You don't engage with no, any no. of that. No, no. I mean, if 
I'll message back once in a while. I'll be like, you know what? <laughs> Sounds good, man. But I'll never say nothing negative back. There's no reason to say nothing negative. Where did you learn that approach? Was it from your parents? Yeah, a little bit from my parents. I, I just how I am, too. I'm yeah. super, when it comes to that, when someone says something negative, I'll always say something like super sarcastic. And then usually they'll be like, you know, I don't know if this guy's being serious or that. Mm -hmm. And I like to keep them guessing. And it usually works out. They get upset afterwards. I'm like, I'm sorry. So you kind of use comedy just to diffuse situations. Of course. I love course. that. So growing up being this YouTube phenom, this fighting phenom in all sorts of disciplines, obviously, aside from boxing, uh, what was your childhood like? Do you feel like you missed out on certain things? Not really, because when I was able to, you know, go hang out with my friends, I was going mm -hmm. to school. Majority of the time, I felt like I was much older than the age I was. Sure. I was always focused on boxing. I didn't want to go hang out. I didn't want to... Even like now, I don't want to go party. It's yeah. never been something that I wanted to do. It just, I want to focus on my goals. I want to become world champion. And I just want to do it for you know, all my family. And then wow. that's just merely how it was. Total blinders. It's, I don't know, I, just, I, I feel like I'm much different than everybody else. So you've never woken up one day and been like, man, I just don't want to do this anymore. I just want to go do something completely different. Once I get up, I, once I get up in bed, I just start punching right away. I just start, you know, <laughs> shadow boxing. And, I just, I don't know, it's, it's always been through my blood. Mm -hmm. Even when, you know, sometimes, you know, when I'm not feeling good, I'm super sore after training, I'll be like, I'll still try to throw some punches here wow. and there. Wow. It's just, I don't know, it's just. It's like really in your blood, it's in your DNA. I think so. That's <laughs> crazy. Do you feel like you even dream about boxing? I've heard people say that when, you know, they're really passionate about something, it's just part and of Boxing's always essence. in my mind, even when I see it. I'll watch somebody fight, even when I watch like some people shadow box in the street. I'm like, oh, he's, what is he doing? Like, he's not doing it right. You know, it, it just, boxing goes in my mind 24-7. It's just how wow. it is. So you'll dissect their combination. Yeah, even when it comes to, like, different sports, so say, like, football, when you know when they throw the punch and mm -hmm. they throw the ball, and you see how their foot moves? I'm like, that's how you work with boxing. Or if you see with baseball, when they throw the right hand, uh -huh. you see how their hips move. Because mainly, majority of the times when you're throwing punches, it goes from the hips. Okay. It goes from the feet. So the majority of the time when I'm watching different sports, I'm still thinking about boxing. I'm like... They're doing it like this. This can actually help me with the certain wow. forms. Wow. So you're finding things in all walks of life on how to improve your technique and your craft and how to hone this and be the best you can be. So at the end of the day, I'm trying to be the best what I can be. This is fascinating. You're so driven yeah. at such a young age. You've been called a prodigy. How would you describe yourself? I mean, I'm just trying to be the best I can be. Like I said, I'm just trying to be... Um, I'm just trying to improve every day. Mm -hmm. That's what it's mainly about. Nobody's perfect, but I'm trying to be the best. I'm trying to fix what mistakes I've done. Sure. Pretty much of what it, what it is. The mistakes I've done in boxing. Like I said, boxing goes in my head. When I think about mistakes, I'm like, I must have done this wrong. I watch old videos of what I'm fighting. Even when I was hurt, you know, I would try to like fix all the spots that I've done. I'm just trying to take care of my family, do all the certain stuff that I can be, become world champion, and, uh, you know, live my best life. It's very, very focused goals. 2016, you're too young to qualify for the Olympics. W was that ever like the pinnacle for you or is it world champion? Uh, I wanted to do Olympics. That's why yeah. I actually flew out to Albania and um, they told me like, if we can win the qualifiers here, mm -hmm. we can make you to the team. So I went over there and I fought 16, 17 years old fighting grown men. And, That's uh, crazy. I ended up winning it. And they came up to me right after I got out, like, yeah, it was nice, but you're too young. What was that moment like? It was kind of heartbreaking because I went all the yeah. way over there, you know, and I just trained, I trained, I trained. And for them to say, like, yo, yeah, I'm sorry, you're too young, it kind of, like, broke my heart. Yeah. But main thing is, it's a good um, experience. I fought other guys around the world, so it's, why not? So you were able to turn a negative into a positive. Oh, yeah. That was my first time with a high gear, too. So it was definitely a different Whoa. experience. And they're a little dirty out there too. Like they, <laughs> they got hit by me, cut me open a little bit, Whoa. but I got super upset. I got, that's how you get me mad, but. So all we have to do is head by you, which yeah, just is head very a little rare bit, occurrence. Cut me up a little bit. I see a little bit of blood, that's it. I'm a different person now. That's what you said. We were talking about this earlier before the interview began. You don't get angry. And people assume that since you're a fighter by nature, you're just an angry person, but you're not. No. That's not the case. There's no reason to be angry. Yeah. There's, there's no reason to be angry. No, if, even if somebody says something bad to me, it's a word. It's not really doing much. If you've seen a couple of fights that I've done, the last couple of fights, mm -hmm. somebody hits me, right?
do I get angry? Do I get mad? I just start, I start like laughing, <laughs> and people are like, why is this guy laughing? There's no reason. It's a business. It's it's mm -hmm. a job. But at the end of the day, we hug it out, man. And that's it. Mom, you ever think you're crazy? Nah. Start laughing when you get hit. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure other people do that too, especially in sparring. But yeah, um, being from Staten Island, your own backyard, you've already had the opportunity to fight at MSG. Yeah. How special was that? It was. Oh man, all the people when I when I went into the ring, I say everybody screaming, but. Actually, I want to find the legit MSG now. The Hulu Theater is, mm -hmm. yeah, you fight all the time in the Hulu Theater. But yeah. The actual MSG is the goal now. I want to find MSG. But um, it was definitely fighting in front of my, all my family, my friends, and my fans, and it was unbelievable. You know, no one can really say that they've done that, let mm -hmm. alone in the Hulu Theater, let alone MSG. It was unbelievable. Thank God, you know, I got the knockout in the first round, the last fight. You know, did a little Triple H spit. I almost got fined for it, too, like I told you before, but... uh. It was unbelievable. I can't take it back now, but I'll never trade it back. We can't gloss over the Triple H moment, the spit. Uh, we were just talking with the photographer, Ed, who's actually here during this interview, and he said that you went up to him prior? Yeah, right, right, literally right before the fight. I was and talking to him right before the so fight. So you knew, what, what happened? Just take me through the series so, of events here. I was thinking about my mind, and I was like, you know what? Uh, since, you know, WWE, you know, they, they do like all the Mm -hmm. All that other stuff, and then it's a ring. A lot of showmanship. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of showmanship, but a lot of people like that. I was telling them before the fight, I was like, you know what? This could be actually a really sick picture if we can get this done right. So I was actually thinking about doing it right between the ropes, like regular Triple H. Mm -hmm. But then I realized, you know, I'll be spitting on the judges, and I don't want to do that, you know? So, <laughs> that can't end well. Yeah, so I was like, you know what? And Ed told me, he's like, go in the corner, you know, with a corner mm -hmm. where it's usually empty. And I was like, all right, once I knock this guy out, get there, right? Like, we'll just make sure it's perfect. Mm -hmm. I'll get the water and then I'll just run there. And it actually worked out perfect. The, the picture came out amazing. The commissioner wasn't happy at all. <laughs> she wasn't happy. She came up to me, she yelled at me after the fight. And then I was like, sorry. Yeah. Eddie was, Eddie was like, listen, I talked her out of the fine and suspension, but I was like, she's like, yeah, definitely don't do that again. <laughs> my mind, my, my parents were a little nervous. My coach was a little nervous because the guy came off of four straight knockouts. He won his last four fights by knockout. And so, you didn't care. Yeah, I was just sitting down, and my dad's like, you got to do this. I'm like, I'm going to knock this guy out. Don't worry about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock him out. And uh, my dad's like, this guy's insane. You know, you got to stay focused. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. So once it came up, I'm like, yo, listen, we got to get this photo after the fight. We got to make sure we get everything right. And uh, the picture came out insane. Like, I actually got, like, a lot of likes from that on Instagram. But It's really cool. Yeah, no, I was excited. I was like, you know what, next time, now I got to think of something else funny to do and not get fined or anything suspension. Do you have any ideas? No, it usually hits me like a week before the fight, okay. in a couple of days. Could you peruse other people's Instagrams or YouTube or anything like that? I'm actually, I actually, now that I feel like the last Triple H one, I'm actually, you know, going back to some old wrestling, you know, oh. to see what they do and throwback. I just don't want to get like, like sued or anything like that. Like Cole Kogan or something. Yeah, I like Booker T, you know. Oh yeah, that's old school. Yeah, it's super old school. So you're into WWE and all that? I was, but you know, like I said, when they do all that other stuff in the ring, Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, wow, and I, I, that's how I want to be. Okay. I always want to put on a show. It doesn't matter like, where I am. I want to, at the end of the day, I want to be like, you remember that guy that I'll, that I'll be in your bear? You know? I'll be in your bear. He was entertaining. Yeah. He was fun. He had a lot of flash yeah. and flair. You kind of are a product of that, though. I mean, your fame stems from this viral YouTube video. You have a huge following on social media. Yeah. Do you feel like you're just kind of a representative of this new generation of athlete that, that it goes hand in hand? Not only do you have to be good in the ring in training, but you also have to be relevant um, on a social platform and have the personality. That's how I feel like it is nowadays. Yeah. I mean, um, if you see other athletes now, before social media meant nothing. Mm -hmm. But now it's like if you see a guy that has you know, a ton of followers and all that stuff, they're going to look after this guy. While this other guy that's behind him that has no followers yeah. is a lot, ten times more hungrier. He doesn't get that much or that much money or, or you know, publicity that he should be getting. Bigger fights. Or bigger fights, you know. Mm -hmm. And But that guy with more social media is going to probably have that better title shot, even though the other guy was working ten times harder. That's why social media is a big factor now, which shouldn't be, but mm -hmm. that's how it is now. But, um, yeah, me, I'm... Social media, I don't really care for social media. Okay. I, I'll just post here and there, and then the majority of the time, I'm just going to be, you know, 
trying to hang out, you know, and, and train majority of the time. Majority mm -hmm. of the time is I'm straightly in the gym. Stay relevant on that side, but obviously you need to focus on the yeah. task at hand. You, you talk about training. What's your average day like? Oh, all right. So, <laughs> all right, <laughs> do Monday, we have enough time? <laughs> Monday, Monday through Friday, um, early morning, around maybe six, seven o'clock in the morning, I'll go for a run. Um, that's one. How long is the run? It depends on the day. Um, I try to maybe wait, run more than like 30 minutes to an hour oh, wow. a day. So then after that, I'll go and uh, go to like the New York Sports Science Lab where I go and they do the mm -hmm. treatment and they do the extra, the extra workouts. So I'll do like strength and conditioning over there. So that's two. And then I'll go um, train with my coach Sosa. I'll finish with him. So we'll do that around maybe, it depends on the day. So it's maybe three to like seven, mm -hmm. right around there. So it usually takes maybe two hours right there. Okay. That's three. And then uh, the fourth, I'll go from 8.30 to 10.30, I'll go to bars, and I'll do like, a little more extra boxing over there. And that's four. And You're that's a Monday to Friday. Yeah, it's, I'm trying to perfect my craft. That's, yeah. that's the main thing I'm trying to do right now. Okay, so how do you feel this machine? Like every day, you know? Yeah, it's, it was like any strict diet. I mean, you're young, so you maybe oh, you can get away. Especially with, before the fight. Yeah. Just very strict diet, especially right now. No, no eating right now, but um, mm -hmm. I feel good. You know, that's, that's the main thing. When you're not training, you're not doing other stuff, that's when you feel, I don't feel the same. Mm -hmm. When I'm doing this, the regular routine, it's like a regular day to me now. Yeah. So I feel good, I'm, I'm happy, you know? If I'm not training, that's when I'm not happy. That's just how it is. And that happened directly following your injury. Oh, was yeah. that a tough time for you? It was, it was a little tough because, you know, you're watching all my teammates fighting and they're all winning and stuff. And, you know, I was going to watch the other fights, you know, but that could have been me fighting, mm -hmm. you know. But it just, it is what it is now. It's, the time's passed. I'm back in shape, you know, and I'm, I'm ready to put on another show. What was the rehab process like for you? It was tough because they were telling me, you know, don't do this, don't do this. They were very specific on like what to do and what not to do. So they were like, don't even go for a run. And I was like, don't go for a run. <laughs> I was like, how do you expect me to get back in shape? Yeah. They were like, you want your shoulder to get better? I was like, yeah. They're like, don't go for a run. Wow. Yeah. So if I like, if I couldn't go for a run, they were like, you know, boxing to me out for a while. So I was like, yeah, I gotta do what I gotta do. But mainly the New York Sports Science Lab, they fixed my shoulder up. You know, I feel better than ever and. You know, hopefully in mid early October, I go and knock somebody out again. And you listened, and here you are. I'm back. What you know, are your expectations good. for early October? Is there a particular fight you have in mind? Um, hopefully somewhere in New York. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. To be honest with you, places don't really matter. Fights don't really matter. I'm, I'm just here to put on a good show, and that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully come back with a win. What's the ceiling for the Albanian bear? Oh, there's no ceiling, man. I, I want to go higher and higher. That's it. I want to be Albania's first world champion. That's the main thing I want to have been doing. And, you know, just put Albania on the map when it comes down to, you know, fighting. Do you feel any uh, a weight of responsibility to represent your country and make your people proud, your parents proud? Oh, of course, you know, because it's, it's tough. You know, you don't want to make it, you know, hard for them. Mm -hmm. You know, because I know when getting punched one time, it's not just getting hit for me. It's like punching my dad in the face too, you know? Wow. For him, that's how it feels. My dad's very, you know, on it with my boxing. He's yeah. been it since day one, so that's why, you know, I can't repay back what I've, all the stuff they've done for me. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm doing this, you know, it's a job for me now. And, um, you know, hopefully I make everybody proud. Your dad's here, keep talking about Coach Sosa. How tight-knit is that group with, with your actual family and your boxing family? Oh, it's, it's close, you know? If, Boxing for me, it's like that. Trust is very important to me. Mm -hmm. If that's how it is with coaching too. If if I feel like we don't have a, a we don't fit or something like that, and I feel something a little bit off from you, it, then it doesn't work out. And I'm like, yo, listen, I, I can't do it. It's not gonna work. Yeah. That's what it is. Sosa has been with me since since I was a little bit before the the Prodigy video came out. Wow. So we've been a for a long time. But uh, yes, yeah, since day one, we had no problems, you know. And, We've been doing good. Mm -hmm. Can't complain. You know, it's now we're just we're on another level. Level we want to go up and up. They've helped you prepare for the bright lights, and yeah. obviously your amateur career and you know being on a big stage. Just when it comes to the internet and social media, your pro debut in Chicago, it didn't seem like you were nervous at all. Oh no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't at all. Why? Uh, he, How? They they fought. Give me your I know, secret. <laughs> with him, I don't really get nervous before fights anymore. 
Okay. I, that's just how it is. It's maybe the two, three hundred fights of, you know, all my life since I was a kid. Before I was getting super nervous. Mm -hmm. I got super, super nervous. But now it's like when I go in there, even the last fight when I was going down, they're like, you're ready? I was like, I got a plan. And uh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, and, you know, the plan worked. But uh, it's just going in there, have fun, and just, yeah. you know, put on a good show for everybody. That's all that matters to me. Mm -hmm. You know, and at the end of the day, it's a job, you know, nobody gets nervous going to their job. That's a good point. So it's a good way to put it. Me, I just go in there, have fun, and that's it, you know. That's cool. So since you are so young and you're kind of ushering in this new wave of, you know, fighter, who did you look up to? Who was your role model? When I first started, you know, um, doing all this stuff, it was actually Bruce Lee. No way. Yeah, it was Bruce Lee. Me, Why? Me and my father, we loved Bruce Lee. We watched all the movies. I love it. And uh, that's what actually kind of started me, like, to do karate and, and kickboxing and all that stuff. And when it came down to, you know, martial arts, mainly boxing, it was uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. With MMA, I had George St. Pierre. That was my favorite MMA oh, fighter wow. of all time. Okay. You know, I met him a couple times, and like I said, those wow. guys are down to earth. Those guys are down to earth people. Those, those guys, they make it seem like they're regular people. Mm -hmm. They're majority of big guys, but they act like regular people, and mm -hmm. that's mainly what you have to be. Like some people, they, I'll go and I'm like, yo, let's get take a picture with you. And they're yeah. like, no. I'm like, what, what's, what takes one picture? Yeah. So now when people come up to me and they ask for a picture, I'm like, yeah, no problem. Just take a picture. It's good to give back and, and be a nice mm -hmm. person. And those guys, they showed me the right way. So I've got to return the favor. Yeah. And obviously you've kind of modeled like your style of fighting after these guys. It's of kind of like melting pot. Yeah, well, Just you're like the super fighter now. Yeah. No, so Chavez Sr., I looked up <laughs> to him because, you know, he loved ripping the body. Yeah. That was one thing. That I love ripping the body. Because it's like a tree, you know, you Square knock it down, down, the head goes down too with it. Huh. So that's why I'm like, you know what, my dad actually was the one that's like, work the body, work the body, work the body, work the body. And, you know, it, the plan works. Yeah. And you never seem intimidated. No. The guy has two arms, two legs like me. So <laughs> what does he have that I don't have, you know? That's, uh, that's, that's how I think of it. What do you do for fun? I love watching other sports, basketball, football, and all that stuff. But I love bowling. Hold up. Bowling? Bowling. I love bowling. Please elaborate. Uh, I need to hear more about that. It's weird too because I'm actually a right handed. Like, I fight orthodox, I write with my right, mm -hmm. but I bowl with my left. And it's, it's super weird. I actually do everything else with my left. I, I throw with my left, I kick with my left, I eat with my left. I do everything with my left. It's You're just, in your I right write, mind. And I do everything else righty. But um, yeah, bowling, I love bowling. My highest was a 228. So, That's pretty good. Yeah. So do you just do you just bowl for fun? Do you watch bowling? Oh, no, 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 I don't watch bowling either. I, okay. just, I just do it for fun. You just do it for yeah, fun. Yeah, I like it. So. Oh, that's cool. Was it just like a family activity growing up or something? No, I just I don't know. Every time I was going bowling, I was like, yo, it's just like, I want to go again. You know, that's this awesome. is how it was. I don't know. I was like, at one point, I was like, you know what? I'm going to turn professional for bowling too. I'm going to make some money in bowling. But then I was like, you know what? Just stick with boxing. You could be the first dual sport athlete, right. bowler, boxer. That's it. So it's like MJ. I'll, I'll, I'll do like Michael <laughs> Jordan, you know? I'm like, I'll take my talents to bowling. <laughs> yeah, baseball, basketball, yeah. bowling, boxing. Yeah. I like the alliteration. Switch bees, you know? Yeah, Switch boxing, exactly. Boxing, bowling. That makes complete sense. So what's your guilty pleasure? Food. Everybody loves food. <laughs> How can you Everybody's not? guilty pleasure is food. But um, yeah, whenever I have the chance to go eat, you know, why not? Okay. When you think of like boxers, when it comes down, to, everybody thinks like boxers have like a clean diet, you know, all the time to eat and clean. Wait till after the fight and then you'll, <laughs> you'll see. That's not true. I love like meat though, like steak, you know, chicken. Mm -hmm. I love seafood. Um, whenever you see that in front of me, I'm like, uh, all right, cheat day. Can't help yourself. <laughs> I get. So what's I your can. ultimate cheap meal? Cheap. Oh, man. Like okay. the fight's over. All bets are off. You can go have okay. whatever you want. All right. So first, I'm gonna have to get like a nice Mountain Dew. That's like <laughs> that's like number one. Okay. All right. That's that's the first thing. After all three fights that I had, the fridge had like three or four Mountain Dews in there ready for me. Probably a nice burger. Mm. Probably a nice burger with some cheese fries. Oh man. And uh, yeah, nice probably a nice milkshake afterwards. Other than that, I think I'll be okay. Or some New York pizza. Oof. Not nowhere else.
Is there 80? Okay, I just moved here. Best place in New York to get pizza is. Are you from New York, like Manhattan, or? Well, I well just moved to this area. So this area? Tell me where where to go? I mean, Staten Island pizza has like the best pizza, but. Are you saying that because you're from Staten Island? I mean, I don't know. I just that's what I've been hearing. Okay, so where's where, what joint do I need to go to if I want to um, slice? Pie, you know, Pronto's, Torino's. Uh, I heard round pie is really good. Uh, if you're from Brooklyn, L and B's. Okay. You ever had L and B's before? No. Oh, it's gonna change you. I'm figuring this out. It'll all change out. you. Okay. Uh, L and B's. That's like number one. And then there's one Rocky's Pizza mm -hmm. in 30, uh, East 34th Street. Okay. Right down there. So that's the pizza. ultimate American meal. You were doing burger, cheese fries, milkshake, and then pizza on the other pizza. side. Pizza and the Mountain Dew. And the Mountain Dew. Who yeah. can forget the Mountain Dew? You can't forget the Mountain Dew. I love this. Then, I don't know if we can end on any better note than that, no, unless we left anything out. Shot, thank you so much for joining us. Thank the Albanian you, bear, I will be following your career. Of course, thank Big you. Big things to come.